Hey everybody, how's it going? What's up? I'm here ready to work on my coat again. Um, pretty much picking up exactly where we left off last time because um, I spent the last few days working on the wig instead of the coat so that I could show pretty much every step of the way. Um, before we get started, I wanted to show off some of my fabric swatches that came in. Oh, Bob the Samurai, thank you for subscribing. And also, right before I started, Evil Crash 9 gifted a sub to Rose of Blush, so thank you both. Um, how's it going? Welcome, everyone. I see some new faces, so if this is your first uh, Heidi stream, thank you for showing up. Simply Proto, thank you for the sub. Uh, anyway, so one thing that I like to do anytime I'm buying fabric remotely, like on the internet, is to um, order swatches first, which is where they just send you a small sample of the fabric, and it's usually like a dollar or two um, to get these. And so these are all from Mood Fabrics, which is a, um, a fabric store that's located in, I think, LA and New York. And um, these are a couple different fabric samples that I considered for this coat. Um, this one right here is like a cotton velvet, so it's like a really low pile velvet. It's like just basically like fuzzy instead of having like a really, really um, like high pile, which would be almost fur like. Um, this is actual fur, which I'm considering using for the top of her little, her, her collar and her cuffs, um, but I haven't ordered that yet. Um, and this is called shearling, which you see it a lot of the time as like a lining on jackets. Hey, Link fan, thanks for the $20 donation. Welcome. Um, so one of the reasons I got this, I don't think it's the right color. It's way too cream looking and not like bright white enough for my purposes because this coat is going to be worn in the snow. So you'll see it right next to like super white snow and any sort of like yellow in the fabric is going to show up and it's not going to match. Um, so for that reason, I'm trying to go with as bright of a white as I can find for the fabric. Um, so I'm probably not going to use this one just because it's not that bright white, but I picked it because I wanted to see it in person, um, because of the texture that it has and that it's like, it's very much, um, the right kind of look for, for what she has. Cause hers looks very soft and fluffy and sheep like, and not quite as fur like, like this one is very, very smooth fur. This is like fake beaver fur is what they call it. It's not actually an animal. It's just fake fur. Um, but they, they call it beaver fur and that's kind of, I guess what they're, uh, replicating or based on. Um, <laughs> lightning fast. No, we don't want any, <laughs> we don't want any yellow snow. We want white snow. <laughs> The no one has peed in and I want my coat to match it and be uh, white as well. Hello, alley cat cosplay. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my stream. Hey, Marine Rose. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Looks like Sherpa wool. I'm going to write that down and try looking that up because I'm still looking for like the perfect wool. Um, and I'm having a lot of trouble finding it because most of the shearling that you find is also that like cream color and not actual super white. So you said Sherpa. I'm, I'm considering a couple different kinds um, because I really want to get that, that fluffy look. Like this is really soft and fine and it actually looks fancier, which is one of the reasons I'm still considering it, but it doesn't really look like the same texture as what she has here in the image. So I haven't made up my mind yet. 
And to top it all off, I actually don't have my coat fabric yet. Um, I ordered it, I ordered it on Etsy and I had to order it blind because the store that I got it from does not have, um, they don't offer swatches. You can't like order just like a small sample. So um, I decided to take the risk rather than paying like $17 for a single yard plus shipping plus waiting for it to come in um, and then deciding, oh, do I want to order more of this or not? I was like, well, I'll just take this gamble <laughs> and order the whole thing so I'm not wasting extra time, extra money on like a smaller piece of fabric that would be less usable. Um, and then probably have to end up ordering an additional yard anyway, just because I bought a yard that's like cut separately. So I decided to just like take a gamble and I ordered some fabric blind. Uh, Red Bart is cool. Thank you so much for subscribing. So, um, yeah, that is on its way and it should be here. I think like Monday, I'm still waiting for the shipping notifications. Um, but it's on its way. It's in like Illinois last time it updated, which was a couple days ago. So I'm hoping that it shows up on Monday. Um, but that's, that's where I'm working right now. Um, I'm waiting for that fabric to come in. I have high hopes, but, uh, it's still a risk. It's still a gamble that I took. And hopefully if that comes in, it will be as bright white as it was in the pictures. And as the, the guy who sold it to me assured me that it was white. Um, and then I'm going to try to match whatever fur I buy to that, um, so that they, they match up. So anyway, that's that's where we are at with that. Oh yeah, someone's uh, Canson Blaze is suggesting. Do I have an IKEA by me because they have um, the wool rugs that might work? Um, I think there's an IKEA around. I've considered that, and I considered using real fur at one point because I like things that are fancy. But one of the problems that I uh, ran into when I was trying to use real wool for the coat and real fur for the collars and cuffs uh, was the fact that most of the time, um, real, wo real wool and like real sheep's wool, like a shearling, uh, which I actually have for leather work <laughs> sitting right here. This is actual lamb hide with the fur attached. So this is like a uh, part of a sheep. Um, so this is sheep hide shearling and I use this for applying dye to leather but as you can see it's quite yellowy um, and I think that one of the reasons is that with being a natural fiber they just can't bleach it that white like I don't think this one I think this is just the natural color of it I don't think this is bleached I think this is just the color of the sheep was um, but the ones that are bleached like they don't get bleached pure white like I don't know if they just can't get it that white but sometimes there are limitations to what they can do with a pigment and how much they can take out. Um, but this is, as you can see, this is the, the floofy kind of um, texture that I was hoping to find for her collar. Except again, the color is an issue. I can't find this particular material in a pure white. Um, so this is, I think, pretty similar to what the cuffs look like, what the collar looks like in terms of it just looks like she's wearing like parts of sheep, uh, which is what this is. But I can't use it because it's not white enough. So I'm still on a mission to find the perfect materials. But in the meantime, waiting for that fabric, um, trying to uh, match fur to whatever the fabric is and um, just making sure everything's ready to go by the time that I have those materials in my hand. Um, Lightning Fast is asking, is dye not an option? Well, um, white is like the absence of pigment. So you can add pigment to a material, but you can't really take it away except by bleaching or by like specific um, dye removers. But like I said, with the real wool, there's like a limitation on how white it will get. Like these are professional bleaching processes that people are going, putting the material through to make it as white as possible. And it just physically won't get any whiter than that. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, and I can't do any better than that in my home, um, especially just because the, uh, the, it, because it's white, it's the absence of pigment and not adding more pigment to it, which is much, much easier than taking it away. Uh, Red Bard, yeah, have, have it, heading out. Well, thank you for stopping by. Uh, find you a good flexible hairstylist and get them on board to whiten that baby up. I don't know, man, that might work. <laughs> mm. Anyway, 
So that's why I thought synthetics would be more practical for this because um, synthetics they can make in any color because it's fake and it's just produced in a factory somewhere. Um, and so it's not really, you know, dependent upon the animal that the fiber comes from or whatever. Hi, Lady Licorice. Um, I'm assuming this is Atelier Licorice, which is my friend. So welcome. Thank you. Um, so I pretty much am picking up exactly where I left off. I was busy sketching parts of this belt last stream, and I'm going to do the same thing at the beginning of this stream. I have this reference image, which is pretty nice because it shows all the different sides of this, or at least most of it. Um, so I'm going to copy as much, of I, much as I can and then kind of just like fudge the details. But I'm going to throw this on really quickly. It kind of sits up high on the waist in the back and then lower on the waist in the front. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Well, welcome, uh, Lady Licorice. I'm so happy to see you here, even though you're busy moving today, I think you said. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. That's quite the commitment. All right. So I just kind of like quickly clip this on myself. I like how it's fitting. Um, it's, it's laying really smooth and it's the right size, so those are Good signs. Put another clip on there just in case. Now the reason I wanted to put this on is to kind of line it up with my body and decide kind of um, where the center back is and where the sides are. So I'm just kind of roughly feeling this out. Um, where Where is my spine hitting? And then just put, placing a clip there so that I can easily refer to it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on each side. Um, so that I can take this off and then my clips are a placement for about where the back and sides are. And those are just like guidelines um, for my drawing process so that I can know that it's um, placed kind of similarly to how it appears in these images. So now I have three clips. I guess you can't see quite all of them and <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Okay, so there's my three clips. And HB Coco says so seeing the artistic process is amazing. Well, thank you. I do my best. Um, so there's a lot of guesswork and just trial and error, but you know, anybody can do it. I also have some of these ready. Um, probably not gonna use these right away, but these are like just, um, they're called French curves. And they're just like little drawing guides that are made up of like all different kinds of curves inside here. And so you just, well, I'll show you here. You can use these to just try to like, well, that's almost right. Maybe that one, not quite. But um, sort of like a ruler, except it's a curved line, obviously. And then you can get these nice smooth curves and you just kind of fiddle with them and find like any kind of spot. Oh, that works pretty well that um, is similar to your lines and that way you just get these really nice clean lines very easily without having to do as much sketching. So I have these out to um, help me clean up my lines. I'm going to do that on the belt as well as on the applique that we drew on the coat last time. I'm like pointing over my shoulder at something you guys can't see but it's my, my coat is sitting right here. So yeah, you'll see it here in a minute. Oh, hey pink girl, welcome. Sorry you're sick, but I'm glad you're able to come catch it as well. And hello, kitten. Thanks for stopping by, our uh, resident mod kitten who keeps everyone in line. All right, so now I'm just going to put little dash marks where my clips are so that I don't have to keep them here. And I'm going to mark them with just like a little shorthand. So this one is going to be CB, which stands for center back in sewing lingo. Kitten, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Welcome. Did I take the extra thickness of the coat into account when making the belt? Yes, I did. So this has all been on my body at the same time. Um, I, like, I may or may not end up leaving a little bit of extra room in it when I cut the belt, just in case. But I'm hoping to have well, I don't know. I don't know what order I'm going to be able to do things in because I, I need to make sure my fabric gets here in time. I'm hoping to have the coat at least mostly together before I fully cut out the belt so that I can put the mock-up on on top of the real coat and then double check that measurement before I cut. But we'll see what order things end up happening in. Sometimes 
you have to account for supplies coming in or working with other people or whatever. Um, so there you go. The Misfit Toy. Oh, thanks for coming from Nina's stream. Yeah, Nina's great. Um, I love watching her work. She's a really, really talented person. Um, okay, so uh, this is my right. Oh, so I'm just going to put a little R here. My right side and left. A little L. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is draw our margins, which I think are like a fraction. Yeah, it's like two eighths and a sixteenth. So that would be four sixteenths, five sixteenths. Are all the torso layers gonna be fabric or any of them fur? How much thicker does it become while putting on the belt? All the torso layers are fabric. Oh, hey, hey, uh, Patricia Kayatri is here in the chat and she's also a streamer, so you should check her out. She does a lot of sewing and embroidery streams. Um, well, thank you for stopping by before you get going on your own stream. Bye-bye, um, Lightning Fast. See you later. Thanks for, for stopping in and saying hey. Okay, so yeah. So this is an odd little measurement, but that's where I decided that it needed to be to be the right thickness. So I'm just gonna make a dash over here. And mark my borders first, and that way I know that I'm drawing within the right space. And there will be one on each side. Sorry, I need to make sure my lines are properly aligned. Which means leaning over my paper weirdly. Oh, okay, I actually just subscribed. Thank you so much. Am I late to the party? Yeah, I just started, so. <laughs> oh yeah, and there's Keatri's uh, channel link that Kitten posted, so go check that out if you want to. Oh, Link Fan gifted this up. Well, thank you. That's Thank you to both of you then. Um, sandwich Night, thank you so much for subscribing with uh, Twitch Prime. If you guys aren't already aware, anybody who has an Amazon Prime account is entitled to one free sub a month to any streamer of your choice um, for no additional cost to you. You can basically um, get yourself a sub and support somebody um, without have to, having to pay anything extra, which is a really cool, nice collaboration between Amazon and Twitch. Are all these marked at the right place? Yeah, I think my mark just migrated slightly. My, my ruler did anyway. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. You're already done with snow for the year personally. We haven't had too much where I am, which is kind of surprising to me. This is my first, um, full year living in Washington state, up in the Pacific Northwest. Well, I've been here since September. So this is my first winter in this area and I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, I never lived this far north. I've always lived in the south, um, in California and in Texas where it's super hot and dry like all the time. Um, SFRG nerd is asking what picture, or what book is this picture from? I keep getting that question and I honestly don't know. I'm pretty sure somebody tweeted this image at me. Uh, there's somebody thumb in it and I just printed it um, so that I could use it while I'm working. So I apologize. I do not have that information. Um, 
But yeah, if I find out, I will make a note of it because I keep getting that question. It makes me feel really bad that I didn't like record the person's name who tweeted it at me or ask them. So if anybody knows, please tell me because I need to know. Oh, but yeah, as I was saying, we got snow like one day, but it was pretty, um, pretty small amount. So it was like a nice fun snow and not like debilitating, clogging the roads and everything. So that was kind of nice. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's just part of being a streamer or whatever as you end up answering the same questions over and over again, which so it goes, it's fine, it's totally fine. Don't, don't apologize. I just wish I had the answer for you. All right. Sorry, I'm still trying to fit this whole belt onto my screen and onto my desk as well. So I realized that last stream on my, my comeback stream, um, I accidentally played the shorter version of this playlist, which is why the music ran out partway through. But this is the long version, which is like over four hours long. Mega Red cheered 100 bits saying, what's the, what's the note here? It appears so small on my screen. I have to open it over here. Sorry. Speaking of answering questions over and over again, LOL, are you and Jared liking the new house? Yes, we love our new house. I especially love my new craft room, um, which is smaller than my last craft room, but thankfully all my stuff got destroyed, so I didn't have to worry about fitting it into this room. <laughs> hey, Metal Jenny. No, I'm just getting started. So far you've missed me drawing a few lines. So, <laughs> it's been quite the party. All right, now we have borders. So, all the rest of my stuff will be within this space. So, there's some vertical lines here because what I'm using is actually um, several strips of like cardstock that have been taped together. So, um, yeah, there's some vertical lines here that might be kind of distracting for me because they're not placed at the points that I have marked, but I'm just going to try to ignore them. And I'm going to drink some coffee because I always need to. Oh. Weezy Peasy is asking, your stuff got destroyed? Yeah, um, last August, it was in the middle of August, I, or it was at the, or I guess it was the very, very beginning of September, technically, it was like September 1st. Um, I came home from a convention and my house had flooded while I was gone and there was a water leak upstairs and so the water like poured down over the bedroom floor and soaked through the ceiling, or sorry, soaked through the floor and then through the ceiling of the room that it was above because we had a two-story house so it like basically the water dispersed across the entire ceiling of that room which was my craft room and it when i walked into the room it looked like it was just raining from everywhere like it wasn't just flowing down one far wall or whatever it was it was flowing it was like falling down from all sides of the ceiling it was crazy looking that was one of the most horrifying moments in my entire life uh, and now i'm laughing about it <laughs> Uh, because I've already cried so much about it, but now it's just like, well, thank God that's in my past and not something that I'm actively dealing with. Um, so I think most people here in the stream are already aware of that stuff because we did a fundraiser stream where um, you guys and people who were viewing uh, came in and donated um, items and money to rebuild my space. And so this is my new rebuilt space um, that is way more awesome actually than my last space. So it was horrible to go through, but now like I'm better on the other side. I don't know. Anyway, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Cause it's, it's still tragic and it was still horrible, but you know, um, 
I'm okay now. <laughs> and we were getting kicked out around the same time, too. That's true. We weren't, like, getting kicked out for any sort of bad reasons. But our, um, the landlord who we were renting from wanted to sell the house. So he was just like, yeah, we, you can't renew your lease. And we were like, oh, uh, okay. And so we were ready to move away. And then that happened, like, two weeks before we moved away. So, uh, you know, there's never a good time for that to happen. But of all times, it was just like, really? Really, universe? You couldn't just let us get out of that house? But uh, now we have a, a new house um, that's way cooler than the last one was. So, you know, it happens. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting distracted again talking about my woes. But right now I'm trying to think about the placement of this belt. Um, oh, I guess you guys can't see exactly what I'm looking at. Um, this is the center back and this is the left. So where it hits on my body, this is my spine and this is the left side like pretty much directly um, of my body so the belt the bag is going to be placed right here in within this space so where the bag is placed we don't have a reference for what the belt looks like underneath that which is fine I mean that's life um, <laughs> it's life and cosplay you just don't always know what you're trying to do um, so I'm going to say that maybe it takes up this much space. Oh, one good guide, whenever you're doing bags for any sort of costume or pockets, the guide that you should go by for how big your bag needs to be should always be the size of your phone. <laughs> At least the size of your phone. No matter how big it is in the reference images, even if it's smaller, I will generally make my bags slightly larger just to accommodate my phone because I'm always going to be carrying my phone in costume. So. I will say that this bag needs to be at least as tall and wide as my phone because if it's not, I'm going to get really annoyed at not being um, able to communicate with anybody. Um, so let's just say, give it like a good, good amount of clearance on each side. I'm just going to say about five inches wide because looking at my phone and kind of how this ruler falls on top of it, I'm just going to say it's, my bag is going to be about five inches wide and then I'll use that as my, uh, my guide when I am actually putting together a belt um, or a bag mock-up, which I haven't done yet. So the belt design, I I'm still going to let it continue under this point. Death Elena has just subscribed. Thank you for subscribing. So my my bag is going to cover this much of the belt um, for the sake of like making a complete costume. We're still going to like the belt design will continue through this space. We just don't have a reference for it. So I'm basically going to have to make it up. I'm going to look at what's on this side. I'm going to look at what's on this side and I'm going to do something in between that kind of connects them one way or another. So that's my goal. Um, and that's what you have to do. Sometimes you just have to make it up because <laughs> you don't know what it's going to be. So, um, Oh yeah. Let's, let's mark this space out. Bag. weird G because of the tape. <laughs> you can only see the G because I drew the other ones so light. Okay. Bag. Um, and that's my visual shorthand for where that's going to fit. Pretzel hands. Yeah, uh, Jared was really messed up after he played the Doki Doki Literature Club. He like came to me and he was just like, <gasps> this game and told me about it. So no spoilers, but you should watch that on his channel. Um... <laughs> Metal Jenny says, my favorite part of my Aerith costume is that I can jam so much stuff in the flower basket without anyone ever knowing. Yeah, I did that too. <laughs> Which, speaking of, I did refresh today's wish list. So if you go to the donate page um, on my Twitch like description, there is a donate option and then at the top is a wish list. Um, that wish list today is full of items that I want to use for photo shoots um, here in my house. So I'm working on setting up a photo set. And the reason I bring that up is because the first one that I want to do is my Aerith costume, uh, which Metal Jenny just mentioned. 
And so um, the stuff that's currently in the wish list, it seems like lots of random things like fake flowers and like uh, stuff like that, but it's all um, stuff that I have specific plans in mind for, for building a photo set for Aerith. So just in case you were wondering why I have like fake grass pads and like other weird stuff, um, that's why it's there. Oh, there's raid notifications now. <laughs> Hi, Nina. Welcome, Nina, and everybody else who uh, is here with Nina. Thanks for coming to my stream today. We are working on um, making a little belt for Zelda. Well, other a number of things for Zelda, but I'm currently working on drawing out the pattern. But I'm mostly just sitting here talking about how I'm going to draw out the pattern as, uh, as streaming so often goes. But anyway, um, so this is like the edge of where that... Um, that bag is going to sit on the belt, and so I'm going to start drawing this back section, um, which is going to, I'm going to try to fit that amount of the design in between these two sections. Prepares a chow army to counter the raid, that's wonderful. Anyway, uh, alright, so let's get to drawing. I'm going to try to move this camera a little bit so you can still see my face while my, my head is just like buried into my my work here. <laughs> Talking about patterning it seems. Well, I hope you got some good um, progress made, uh, Nina. Hello, Lulu. Welcome. All right. So there's like a three wave pattern. I don't know how well you guys, you guys can't even really see what I'm looking at. But um, if you want to try to find this reference image, I guess I haven't really posted it anywhere. Um, I've been able to find it online though, if you like are searching for it. Okay, so I'm gonna say that maybe the midway point is right about here. And between these, it's right about here. And use that as a guideline for, did, did I even mark that? No. So one of the things you can do if you're not like naturally really great or confident with drawing is, um, kind of find, oh no, I was looking at the wrong lines because this is the whole bag. Okay, so this is really, <laughs> see, I, I know I'm gonna end up messing up because of that. Um, so I'm looking at the space that I have and the space of the thing that I'm trying to replicate and just kind of visually dividing it up like geometrically in my brain. So if this is the total amount of space that we have to work with and um, I'm trying to fit this whole design on there, then we'll find the midpoint first. So maybe about like there-ish. And this is all just, you know, really loose and you can change it as you need. Oh, Link fan. Or that, is that Link fan or is your name just playing, just playing weird? Um, bought a Shoji screen. Thank you so much. That is for uh, another photo set that I have planned. Awesome, Nina, enjoy your snack break and uh, your, your muck up work. Yeah, thank you so much, Link fan. I don't know why your name displayed weirdly. <laughs> oh, you, you mistyped your own name. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much uh, for that donation, and I am excited to put that photo set together. Um, okay, back to drawing. Um, I'm trying to split this space up by kind of mentally dividing it, as I was saying. So this has like three waves, which by which I mean it's like a lines. Oh, it might even be more than that. Okay. You guys can just barely see what I'm sketching. This is where my, my curves will come in as well. But there's um there's actually two waves on this side and three waves on this side. Which is like three different like bands, I guess, of like just lines. And they're kind of abstract, like they're not really, um, like they're not an even width, they're just kind of loose on there, so that's what I'm doing. Oh, 
Oh, there's the mistyped version of Link Fan's name up at the recent donor. Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, do I use the French curves only for correction? I mean, you can use them for drawing. I just prefer to like lay down my own lines and then clean them up. If you're less confident and you want to use, well, I mean, it might not be a confidence thing. It might just be your, your personal preference. You can just use them for drawing, but um, I feel like I have more control when I'm like, okay, this is the exact point I want it to be at. And I'm just like drawing from my brain. And then I can go back and line these up rather than trying to use them as pieces and then like ending up with my lines in weird weird spots like i feel like i personally get more control over the whole piece when i am just um doing it on my own okay so then rather than there being a third band it's like an equal space but it's divided up horizontally so when I look at the small version of this, I can't even tell, but then when I drew it bigger, I realized that it looks almost like these are continuous lines. And I'm going to clean them up to make that more so, um, because when I was drawing them, I didn't really think of it that way. But I do think that like this is sort of a continuous visual thing, and I'm going to try to draw them that way as I clean it up, if that makes sense. Penguin Cosplay, thank you for subscribing. For seven months in a row, that's awesome. And saying, love your work, so happy to see you streaming again. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the support. Pop-Tart is working on a crochet project. That sounds fun. I don't know how to crochet, it's one thing I can't do. So maybe I'll have to learn that sometime. All right, um, so yeah. Continuing with my drawing. So this is divided up. This space here is divided up horizontally and I'm gonna treat it like a continuation of those same lines, um, which they actually go up. I don't really know if this is the way it's supposed to be or not, but I do think it will look nice. And unless you're like an original artist on this Zelda game, you're not going to know um, exactly what the, what it's supposed to look like. Um, so anybody who looks at this costume is just going to be like, oh, cool or not. Um, and not know like, oh, did she draw her belt exactly perfectly? Is this, is this true to the design? They're just going to know whether or not it looks good or not. Um, so, you know, put your effort where it counts. <laughs> is something I try to tell myself. I don't, I'm not always good at doing that, but like, you know, um, there's only so accurate that it can be. And it's just your interpretation. Ultimately, I feel like that should be a little bit more curved. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit so that my French curves can perfect the job. Am I going to emboss the material for the design or layer pieces to get the design? Asks Rose Whiplash. Um, I'm going to emboss it, basically. It's going to be tooled leather. So the same way that I did my um, Zelda pauldrons from the Twilight Princess costume um, is going to be the same method I use for this. So each one of these will be like a lump. <laughs> and all of the lines that I'm currently drawing are my guidelines for um, the uh, impressions. So... Um, Shayfly is heading out. Thank you for stopping by. Have a lovely night. All right. I'm like doing twice as much talking as I am drawing, but I still feel so accomplished after these streams. <laughs> okay, and then from here on, it continues to go down like this. So this is why I think that these lines are connected and it's not necessarily like really obvious in the small version, um, but I think it becomes more apparent as you look at it. Um, so here again, we don't really have a perfect reference for this section here. 
There we go. Um, this right here matches this area right here where my, my fingers are, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Min Nugget opened an online crochet shop. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Min Nugget is the person who sent me um, my Zelda squid, which is up on display in my window. Um, you can't really see it from where we're sitting here, but I put it down in my um, Instagram at some point if you want to check that out. But Min Nugget made me a Zelda squid, and it's really cute. Uh, Keatry is heading out. Um, go enjoy your stream, and good luck with it. And I'll see you later. Cool, Dark Lena, thank you for subscribing. Welcome. All right, so now I'm going to try to copy <laughs> what details I can from this other one. I don't have a belt buckle drawn yet. Um, it's gonna need to be a little bit bigger than my belt in order to cover all the edges. So I'm just gonna say that this, much, this amount of space is gonna be like hidden. Um, this little belt look, buckle looks like a perfect pentagon, and since it's geometrical, geometric, I'm just going to find a shape on the internet and make sure that I print it out and it'll be the right, the right size and the right angles and all that, and the lines will match. Um, Koopa Prez, welcome. Yeah, we're doing a creative crafting stream, which hopefully you like. You said this is your first one. Well. Hopefully I can entertain you or teach you something new. It's totally different from gaming streams, but I think these are really fun. I like to watch creative streams for my friends whenever I am working on stuff, if I can. I'm gonna curve this a little bit more. And Bard Kurtap <laughs> just subscribed. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome. Small Fox Cosplay is doing Snow Quill Link at Katsu, and I seriously hope I get to snag a photo with you too, Small Fox. That's awesome. Um, I'm really excited. Unfortunately, Zelda does not wear this costume like with Snow Quill Link specifically in like any cutscenes or anything, but I think they go perfectly together because it's her little snow outfit too. So um, I'm on a mission to specifically to find as many Snow Quill links as I can. Um, or I think the Royal Guard link would look really good with this too. So I hope that um, I see you. And if you see me anywhere, um, please come and say hello. And I'm going to be wearing this on Friday. So just FYI, if you're around on Friday at Katsukon, um, that's when I will be Snow Zelda. And I would love to see you and take a photo with you, especially if you are Snow Quill link. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Bard Kurtap. That's very kind of you. Uh, saying they enjoy my work. I, uh, I enjoy being able to do this work. So thank you guys so much for showing up and supporting me and allowing this to be a thing. Okay. So that's about as much of this design as I can see. And otherwise, we're missing the reference for what belongs in this space. So I'm going to go ahead and continue drawing everything that I can see. And then in the end, we'll just kind of fudge these lines and make it look wavy and, and similar to wherever else I can see. So there's the bottom part, the right part, the back, where the bag goes, and then now this is the left part. So this is everything between where the bag ends and where it meets the belt buckle again, which is going to line up with both this section here and this section here is what we're looking at. Um, which these match very well, like they are identical. So really, I guess I don't need two references. I'll slide that down a bit. Lady Licorice uh, has to run and get more moving done. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Uh, good luck with it. Power through, man. Moving always sucks. Um, I'm really glad you were able to stop by as well and have a lovely rest of your day. We'll talk to you later. Let me, uh, I know I missed some things. 
Uh, Pretzel Hands is asking, my mom is running a wool and knitting store. She's fallen on hard times. Can I perhaps post a link for people to support her? Absolutely. Um, Kitten is here as our mod. Um, Kitten can permit you to post a link. Um, so if she doesn't mind, she can type your name in and um, I think it's like 60 seconds or like a minute you have to post that link. So get it ready and then, yeah, by all means, please share that. Yeah, I'd love to see um, people, Link and Zelda cleaning up Hyrule. <laughs> All right, cool. Kitten is on the case. Kitten is going to help you post that link as soon as you're ready. And yeah, I would love to, to see your mom's wool and knitting store for sure. All right, once again, this is where the, the line ends. And we're going to just say that the belt buckle will probably cover about this much. And once again, I'm going to continue the lines underneath where I expect areas to be covered, um, but just for, for sketching them out the most easily. This is how we'll do it. Uh, so we've got this much space to fill. And this being about the midpoint here, there's kind of like an S curve looking guy kind of right here in the middle. All right. I feel like this pattern is repeating itself to a certain degree. I'll have to take another closer look at it once I've got it mostly sketched out and see how closely it does, but it definitely feels like that. And this one kind of comes down. It's almost like a weird little eye pattern right here in the middle. It's not perfectly symmetrical. There's like kind of an organic uh, shape and movement to the lines where it's not not perfectly straight or perfectly symmetrical or anything like that. Um, they are smooth. Yeah, I can hear Jared downstairs like cackling like a madman, and I'm just like, "What are you doing? Is he streaming right now? I don't, I don't know, but he sounds like a crazy person." Can you guys hear that? Probably not. It's just like echoing through the house. Which I was wondering if Aries is gonna come and visit me during my new streams. Oh, Nightbot isn't set up? Nightbot is supposed to be set up. I'm sorry. Okay. Interesting. So links aren't disabled. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to fix that for, um, for future streams, but unless we have problems, I'm just gonna keep going right now and then I'll, I'll check it out later. But Pretzel Hands, I'm glad you're able to post your link. Uh, Kitten, I'll look into that for next time. That's weird. Um, but that explains some things. I haven't seen Nightbot going. <laughs> Jet Set Slider and making a new desk. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, Dolphin says you can't hear Jared laughing. You kept hearing things in my office and couldn't tell where the laughing was coming from. Yep, that's Jared. He's crazy sounding. There's a money pool on PayPal with a short explanation in the extended description in English. Um, and that is for the shop. Oh, hmm. It says that one is removed. Maybe you should check your link because I just clicked on it and I did not get... Oh, okay. You're, as you typed, it looks like your word, every dollar is massively appreciated, got added into that link. So you might want to repost that link um, and leave a space or just like hit enter after you're done. Jared is not streaming. He's just cackling downstairs like a crazy person. Oh, he, Anna and Holly are watching the live stream. That's what they're doing. Yeah, okay, cool. There we go. There is the new link from Pretzel Hands. And it's in German, I believe. And I will um, translate that in a bit <laughs> on mine. But hey, that looks really cool. Is That's all yarn and like wool roving, I assume? If she's got wool roving, I might end up shopping for that. <laughs> yes, Pretzel Hands, thank you. If anybody here is able to contribute to helping out with that, that would be a uh, very kind of you to help support another member of our community here. Um, but anyway, 
going to continue on with this one and draw my next line. Oh gosh, now I can hear Aries downstairs screaming like a madman. Aries has gotten into these moods where he's just like yowling like he's in pain or upset, but he's totally fine. Strawberry Hero donated $5 saying, uh, let me read that little note. I believe in you and what you do. Thank you so much. That's extremely kind of you. Um, I appreciate that. So yeah. Uh, no, Anna and Holly are not visiting right now. I think they're just watching and like talking to each other. Uh, they're probably in like a video call or something. Uh, but yeah, they've all been very, very D&D &D obsessed, like more than usual. <laughs> uh, with their characters and their games. So I know that they were, they were really looking forward to seeing what happened in today's Acquisition Incorporated game. Um, because... I guess, no spoilers, there's some sort of uh, overlap between the universes, between what's happening in Jared and Holly and Anna's game, which is Dice Camera Action, and Acquisitions Incorporated, which is the same. Dark donated four dollars and one cent. <laughs> Thank you so much. Working on his war cries. Yes, Ares is a drama queen. Ares is the biggest drama queen. Um, he's just constantly screaming, like, everything in his life is bad, but I'm just like, you are the most pampered animal, you have everything that you could ever ask for, why are you such a drama queen? Yeah, I can just hear him, like, yowling, like a, like a crazy person. So, I think I need to reassess where these lines are hitting, because I wanted the inside one to hit. Oh, there he is. Aries, come here. Will you stop crying? Stop crying and come say hi to my chat. Come here. Did you guys hear that one? Come here. Okay. Big boy. Kidder. Look. Aries, how are you doing? You feel better now? Oh, hey, daughter of Ungoliant. Ungol Do you feel better? I heard you crying. What were you screaming about? Nothing? Just scream about nothing like usual? Happiness is a big orange cat. Yes. Yesterday was apparently National Kiss a Ginger Day, uh, as my husband informed me before kissing me. But I made sure I got my kisses on Aries um, because he's also a ginger, just like his mama. Oh, he just wants to sit down. He doesn't like it when I pick him up, but he wants to be in my lap. All right, so Aries has now joined us. You just can't see him except for maybe his little, little fluffy tail. There he is. <laughs> maybe I should get a pair of grooming gloves so he won't yell so much. I need to fix my camera. I don't know. I don't think anything will help him. Like I said, he already has anything he could ever ask for or want in his little life. Um... But he still screams. <laughs> he screamed. Yeah, um, in our old house, the last place we lived in California, um, our bedroom had a balcony attached to it. And Aries is, is purely an indoor cat. He does not go outside on his own. Um, but our our bedroom had a balcony so that we could just open a, a door and let him safely onto the outside where, um, you know, he could go and enjoy the weather and, and sit out there for a while, but he was totally enclosed, um, you know, on the second story, so he wasn't able to, to escape or go anywhere or come to any harm. So he got into the habit of just, like, being on the balcony all the time, and he loved it, because before that he'd never had a balcony before, he just liked to sit by windows and we would like open them. Um, is he a Norwegian forest cat? No, I think he might be part Maine Coon because he has some of those features, but he's he's like a, he's like a mutt. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a dog term, but he's just like a, a mixed cat that I just like got um, out of somebody's garage. <laughs> he was born in somebody's garage. I don't know what kind of cat he is. He's an orange one, a big one.
And now he's in here fluffing up my pattern paper. <laughs> um, so yeah, he had access to this balcony and he got really spoiled because he was outside all the time and just chilling in the sun. And, and even though the air in LA is like terrible and not clean or fresh, he would still enjoy sitting out there and there were a lot of animals by where we lived. So anyway, that was like Aerie's favorite thing. And now we live in a totally different climate with no balcony. And not only that, but for whatever reason, the windows in our house here just don't have screens. You open them and it's, it's like straight up open to the outside. Like you put your hand out, you can jump out the window if you wanted to, there's just no screens. And uh, we're renting this place, so we're not going to put in all the money and effort to put in screens ourselves, because that would be hundreds of dollars and lots of work for something that, you know, we would leave behind when we move out. Um, so for that reason, we aren't able to let Aries even sit at the windowsill with the, with the window open, like, um, to get the scent of the outside, just because he would be able to jump right out. So, um... He's been kind of deprived in that he hasn't been able to sit and enjoy the outside air. And I think that's what he's screaming about. Sorry, that was my long-winded explanation of why Aries is depressed. <laughs> um, is that he can't enjoy the outside air. So this is not symmetrical. This one curves up more on one side than it does on the other. Which I am trying to replicate here. Aries, are you actually just playing with my pattern paper? Because if you are, I'm going to throw you out. Okay, no. He was getting into... I had some wig bags um, sitting out, and he was playing with that. Have I considered harness slash leash training, Aries? Uh, I tried it once. It did not go well. He was not pleased to be on a harness whatsoever. But I did take him outside and let him walk around on that for a little while. And he mostly just, like, hunkered down and wouldn't go anywhere and got really mad at me afterward. Um, when we came inside, he like did a weird flip and like got out of his harness, even though he was secure on it the whole time we were outside. And I was just like, oh really? You could have gotten out the whole time, huh? <laughs> um, Joe Jokes Are Cool is saying, where did I find the art of Zelda? Unfortunately, I, I don't know what the source is. Somebody tweeted this at me and I wish I had asked for the source right then because I keep getting asked and I don't have an answer and I apologize for that. Um, do my, do your windows have those little security locks on them? I know it would let in all sort of gross bugs in, but it would at least get them get some fresh air. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. They're like sliding windows. So I guess we could open it like an inch and let him, um, you know, get that much fresh air, but I feel like that would just be a tease almost. Um, cause we wouldn't be able to open it any further than that. We wouldn't be able to open it far enough for him to like get out. Um, let me look at this. Does that look, yeah, I guess that's pretty approximate. I might bring this lower. This is why I like to sketch it out just freehanded is because I make like really fine adjustments. So this is what I was talking about. Like if I were trying to use those little curved, um, like the little French curves to draw all of these lines, I would be locked into wherever, whatever position I manipulated them into. Um, but I really like the control I get from the free form, just being able to draw it out, um, changing, very, very minute details and angles and things. Um, and then afterward, being able to just clean them up and make them look perfect. So yeah, I think that's a good, good placement. So there's either side of the bag, there you can see it, is pretty much done. Oh, heck yes. Thank you, Rose Whiplash, doing research for all of us. Um, 
Yes, thank you. So this is another version of the exact same image from the book that I'm working from, or like the, the reference image I have here. Rose Whiplash just posted a link to that in the chat, so you can go ahead and click on that if you want your own copy of this, um, or if you just want to see what I'm working on in greater detail today. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, those little security things are just like little clips that won't let your window open more than an inch or so. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could do that, and we should do that. Why not let him out? He can't survive outside. He doesn't have claws, which my my parents declawed him when I was younger. I wish I had prevented that, but I didn't, and it was kind of a different attitude toward it then. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, I, I can't let him out. I don't trust him to come back, and he's not able to fend for himself in any sense. He's just, he's a big baby. He just can't be outside. Um... So yeah. All right, so now I'm just trying to finish out this portion, which is right here. And um, then we'll start cleaning up our lines and start filling in the parts where we have to just kind of play it by ear. Yeah, and see, these are connected. This has to be like so big that it just takes up like all of the space. Or it can enlarge this one, which honestly, maybe it should some more. These lines are just so thick. It seems weird to draw them this thick because I'm looking at this teeny tiny reference where they just look so small. But I have to fit this much pattern into this much space and do that however I can. So um, these lines are bigger than I expected they would be, but that looks pretty even. Once again, cleanup will happen in a little bit. Um, and I think with that, it will be enough to kind of Um, make these horizontal lines. Again, they're just, they look so much longer than my reference, but I'm doing what I can in terms of keeping it as accurate um, and true to uh, the right kind of look. And just erase all my stray lines. Let me see what I think about that. Um, that's fine. Ah, heck yes, okay. Not sure if you saw, Rose Liplush says, um, I didn't see you say this earlier, so thank you for repeating yourself. Um, it is from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Masterworks 30th Anniversary Book, Volume 3. And I'm copying and pasting that right now so that every time people ask me that question, I have an answer. <laughs> Yeah, Ares is a nice big floof. He's just just a fluffy boy. He just doesn't really contribute anything else, but he doesn't need to. All right, yeah, so I found that book. There it is, now I know. 50 bucks, I might get that book. That would be useful. My cat's just ignore Aries' meows. Yeah, sometimes if I'm watching like a cat video on the internet, Aries can hear it and he'll get upset. He'll be like, what? Who's that other cat? And then figures out it's coming from the phone and is like, oh, never mind. Just some internet cat. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger and see if that helps proportionately uh, the whole thing overall.
Yeah, that's fine. I like that just fine. Yeah, translating something from being tiny to being a lot bigger is, it always just looks weird, but I mean. I made it as proportional as I can, eyeballing it, which I don't think is bad. I think it's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off on this. Uh, I'm gonna start using my little clear curvy rulers here to start um, cleaning up my lines a little bit. Yeah, the book is not available in the States as of yet, so it's hard to come across scans for now. And yeah, these are in Japanese. I don't know if there is an English version of this book or not. It might just be Japanese, but um, that's where this is. That's what this is. All right. Now I'm just taking my curves. I think it's just actually a little bit more curved up. Now I take that back. And you can just mess with them until you find a section of it that resembles what you're trying to do. And this is going to make um, drawing the digital version look just much faster because so what I'm in, what I'm going to do with this is. Um, as soon as my, after this stream, when my drawings are finished, I am going to um, take some scans, just like a traditional scan on my, um, my scanner downstairs. I'm going to do some scans of all of the uh, drawings that I've done and all these patterns that I've made and um, load that up in Illustrator and then I'm going to trace my own drawings digitally so it's like one nice clean line that is like the final word <laughs> on where what my stuff will look like and so being able to make all the little the small adjustments manually like in person as i'm doing now is really helpful for me about that. i feel like it needs to taper down a little bit more at the very bottom it's like it's too flat Now I'm gonna be super indecisive with these guys and spend my whole stream on this. <laughs> there we go. And that's why I don't draw with them because it's so hard to find exactly the section of the curve that you need unless your line is already there. So um, because I've already like sharpened my lines up with these little uh, French curves, the digital tracing portion should hopefully be really fast um, because I'm already really confident with the placement of the lines and the exact um, look of them and all of that. And up until now I've been tracing, I'm sorry, sketching really lightly and then as I use these French curves, I'm drawing a much stronger line um, because now I'm confident in it. Which when I, um, when I first got these French curves, it was off of my wish list on this stream, by the way. So shout out to whoever purchased these for me. I should be recording these names, but but I haven't yet. But yeah, these are one of my rebuilding my craft room items. Yep, and there's Jared bursting out in laughter again, like a madman. If you could hear that in the distance. Time are we at? It's two o'clock. I've been going for an hour. It feels like longer. I 
there's that distant Jared laugh again. I'm glad he's enjoying himself, you know? <laughs> These shorter curves are a lot easier to match up because there's a lot more spots. I'm actually going to move this line just barely. There's a lot more spots on the um, little French curves I'm using that, that line up with them. That one's almost straight, but whatever. There's that section down. That's pretty perfect. Honestly, this part is just really satisfying because you can take something that is messy and make it look really nice. And just like a single stroke of your pencil. I don't want to go too crazy with trying to erase all my stray lines because they ultimately don't matter. Um, just trying to make it easy on myself when I put this into Illustrator. So that then I'm not trying to digitally pick and choose where my lines are. Um, I just personally like am a lot more comfortable with traditional drawing. I feel more confident with putting my lines down this way compared to drawing digitally because I don't have as much experience with that. Um, so maybe one day this will change whether I'm just making all my physical mock-ups and my physical drawings, which I think a, a mock-up is always necessary, but um, I could be doing this portion digitally if I were more confident in those skills, I suppose. Uh, but you know, it's fine doing it this way too. The best way to do it is the way that you are comfortable and confident in it and doing anything um, because you know you're able to make good progress that way. Um, that said, it's also good to branch out and teach yourself new skills, but um, the best way to do it is the way that works for you, ultimately. Cool, and there's like this whole first section down, and that was much faster than sketching it. Now, since I said we're continuing this pattern into um, our, our bag section here, I'm just gonna start, yeah, see, I'm gonna move that. I know I don't like that line. <laughs> I'm gonna spread it out some. I'm going to continue this shape and make it wider at the bottom to kind of have that same taper that our other lines had. And I'll lighten this up since we don't we don't need that to be super accurate. I'm going to make a note on here and say this width is five inches. I don't even know if you guys can, you can't probably, even, probably can't even see what I wrote, but there you go. Uh, Marine Rose heading to bed. Thanks for dropping by. Glad that uh, you could chat with us here and have a good night.
Yeah, the French curves are super useful. Um, I haven't really sat down and used them since I got them until now, so this is really useful. Yeah, getting clean lines and resizing patterns digitally is awesome. I'm probably going to tweak some of the sizes on my um, my coat little appliques that I drew. Uh, they're fine as is, but I think that I could make this just a tad bigger and maybe the one in the back just a tad smaller. And those are the kind of like fine adjustments where like if I wanted to do that physically, I would have to totally redraw it just to make it like the tiniest bit bigger. So instead of doing that, I'm going to copy what I already drew um, and then digitally resize it because then I can just very, very easily drag and, and drop it to be bigger. So, um, Will I be streaming leatherworking of the designs on the belt? Yes, I absolutely will. I'm actually really looking forward to doing that because I haven't done any tooling in a little while. And um, I think this one is going to look really nice in that material. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to our next section rather than um, making all of my uh, imaginary bag design just quite yet. And I think I'm going to expand this section too and make these a little bit bigger because this section looks like my lines are smaller than they are over here. So I'm going to try to like space it out a little bit more. I think you're always just kind of figuring out what you want. So yeah, I'm going to draw this one actually outside of my sketch line so that I'm enlarging it as I go. <laughs> that was unintentional. Oh, now it's like under my chair. Ugh, I made it. If I ever decide to take a crochet, keep good wrist support around, I will keep that in mind. And once again, I'm going to enlarge this line somewhat. Um, so I'm drawing outside of my sketch line, but I'm still trying to like capture the spirit of the line <laughs> that I drew. Oh, and I think I shifted my, okay, I got it. Cool. This actually looks a lot better than my initial version, so perfect. And once again, well, I actually want to change the curve a little bit. I will continue my line up into the bag zone. How are we doing up here? Leiko Yumi says, I discovered your work because you're both working on Zero Suit Samus at the same time. Thanks for keeping me motivated. That's awesome. Um, always happy to meet another Samus. <laughs> I missed your comment a minute ago when I was reading the other ones, but thanks. Thanks for being here. Yeah, unfortunately my Zero Suit Samus, um, my Zero Suit got damaged when I my house flooded. That was one of the costumes that I lost. Um, although, I'm, I'm not going to say too much, but I'm, I'm trying to still do something with it. I'll just put it that way. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it or how it will turn out, but um, I'm still going to do something with it.
This is one of my favorite jams <laughs> on this playlist. And there's some good jams on this playlist. Am I redoing the zero suit? Um, not currently. I have too many other things on my plate to remake a costume right now. Um, there's, there's other priorities that I want to see to first. Um, I would love to someday remake that costume for sure. Cause I just love wearing it. Honestly, it's one of my favorites to wear. Um, but it's not currently on my 2018 schedule. Stuff that I do want to make. I have, I've actually recently expanded my cosplay wish list a lot because this year I want to be as productive as I can. Um, which I have a couple different, different goals for how I'm going to change kind of my general approach. But anyway, um, some of the costumes that I'm thinking about doing, and none of these are set in stone plans because I like to do things one at a time and only commit to like publicly working on one thing or purchasing items for one thing. Um, otherwise it just gets confusing and overwhelming because you have too many, too many projects underway at the same time. But some of the costumes that I am thinking about that I'm highly considering are um, Arwen from Lord of the Rings because now I'm in Washington and the setting is just like perfect for that. Like it's so beautiful um, and so perfect for Lord of the Rings photo shoots. So I have a couple different people that I want to shoot with um, with those costumes, uh, but I want to be Arwen. And I've also talked about how I want to be Galadriel as well, but I'm probably going to do Arwen first because I'm more comfortable with that. Hey, Melinda Shan is here saying, I'm tooling my bracer and hoping my leather friends don't judge me. Oh, <laughs> um, the only judging I'll do is how cool I think it is that more people are using leather. So no, no judgmental, no, no tooling judgments here. I think it's great and I think it'll look awesome. Oh, well, thank you, Red Bard is excited about Galadriel plans. Thank you. I wasn't certain whether I should do Galadriel or Arwen first because I do want to do them both. Um, I, I have like some facial similarities with both of those actresses, but I don't look like, it's not like a really strong resemblance to either one of them. So I'm kind of like right in the middle of like, hmm, who do I actually look more like? Eh, does it matter? Eh, I don't know. Um, but I think that Arwen is just a, uh, a little bit easier to be honest. <laughs> so I was like, I could probably put that one together faster. So that's a thought. Um, another one that I've been thinking about is uh, Linkle, which is the female Link from, I think Hyrule Warriors is where she appears technically. Um, but I just think that character design is super cute. I would love to do Linkle. Um, more Zelda, of course. More Link. The, the Link that I almost made was the Zora Link, which I still really, really want to do. <laughs> uh, Nina's like zooms in because Lord of the Rings. Yes! Yes, gender bent Aragorn. Yes, let's do it. You do your gender bent Aragorn and I'll do my Arwen and then we can take uh, beautiful romance photos together. <laughs> um... But yeah, those are all ideas that are cooking in my brain. I still really want to do the Zora link, but I just didn't think I would have time for Katsukon specifically. So I'm going to try to postpone that one to later in the year, but hopefully still do it because I just think that armor is so fun and it looks so cool. Zora link from Majora's Mask? No, Zora link from Breath of the Wild is the one I was thinking of. There are several different versions of, of what a Zora link can mean. I guess I should have been more specific. Uh, I was talking about Breath of the Wild cosplay specifically because I've been planning Breath of the Wild cosplay for so long and I haven't actually done any of it yet except for this one. Yeah, you know what? I like the Strider version too. I like it when he's nice and scruffy. <laughs> before he gets all cleaned up to be kingly. But yes, I highly await um, seeing uh, <laughs> Nina, seeing your, your Strider slash Aragorn. I think that'll be great. 
All right, so this is another area where I need to kind of like fudge the design and fill it in. Um, so I started making these lines slightly bigger and I might do the same over here just to kind of <laughs> close in on the space that's unknown. Fight to the Ford scene. Yes, I really want to do that. I have a, um, a Frodo lined up. So that's, a, that's one of the things I want to do specifically. <laughs> oh yes. I'm glad pretzel hands. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it helps your mom and that you're, you're good. <laughs> yes, I have a Frodo who's ready to be so passed out and sick and uh, tragic looking. Oh my gosh. Frodo, when I watched those movies again, like kind of recently, just watching little Frodo, like just disintegrate from this like pure being into like this uh, just poor battered bruised little guy on his way to Mordor. It was just like heartbreaking. <laughs> Because I hadn't seen those movies in so long that I kind of forgot how how rough things are at times for, for our little hero. But yeah, I, I have um, a Frodo already picked out from a guy who wants to do Frodo with me. So, I mean, I'll cosplay with anybody, obviously, but I have a Frodo lined up. <laughs> yeah. So those are costumes that have been kind of in my mind for a while. Um, I don't know if anybody has any costume requests, like I'll certainly consider them. Most of the time, like it just takes so long to make things like as much as I would love to just take requests and, and fulfill everybody's like dreams. Like I can barely do the ones that are my top picks because it just takes so long for me to make costumes. I'm um, trying to get faster. Um, but that said, if anybody has any, like, ideas for me, I will certainly think about them. Um, but ultimately, I'm gonna pick whichever I think is the best use of my time and materials for whatever events I have lined up. So, uh, let me know what you want to see from me. If there's anything specific, if there's somebody you think that I look a lot like, or just you want to see how I would go about making a particular thing, um, let me know. I also thought about Game of Thrones cosplay because it's another series that I really love. But again, like I think I'm less likely to cosplay from things that are live action just because there's already an actor that like with specific facial features that the characters supposedly look like, and you know, in your head they look like that um, compared to um, you know Zelda here where she's got video game face and whoever can do that makeup and that look or whatever can look like that or or not you don't have to if you don't want to but i guess for me i'm like i hesitate more to do live action because i'm like mm, do i look like that actress and you know maybe it doesn't matter maybe it shouldn't matter but that's just something i think about anyway um all right, so I'm, I've pretty much done, oh, I haven't cleaned up this portion yet. I'm trying to think about what I wanna put here in the middle. So we've got two areas still here. We've got this one to fill in and this whole bag area still needs to be filled in, but I'm gonna use my, um, this. Oh, Final Fantasy IX, uh, Metal Jenny says, that's actually on my list too. I love Final Fantasy IX so much. I think I'm gonna do Garnet this year. She's on my list. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 costume? That's the online one, right? Jared plays that a lot, but I haven't really played that. But uh, Nina and Melinda apparently are planning that, which sounds cool. But yeah, Final Fantasy 9 is my personal favorite. Um, Hi, Rainbow Tastic. Mitsuru from Persona 3. Cool. Um, I've played part of that game. I'm going to write that down too because I like her. I like that idea. And that would probably be, because that's like a school uniform costume, right? I mean, so that would be something I could put together kind of kind of quickly if I wanted to. Ah, uh, Dragon Ladies, that sounds awesome. Is that your uh, Final Fantasy plans? That sounds so cool. Um, Shelb C says, I think I would like the idea of bringing a video game slash cartoon costume to life versus recreating a real costume that already exists. 
Uh, that said, I would totally rock Cersei's coronation dress. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, not that... I mean, people should and can enjoy cosplay in any way that they personally want to. That said, I kind of agree with you that personally, it's more interesting and fun for me to create something from uh, like a digital reference like this and to bring it into life versus just step for step trying to recreate another seamstress's work. Uh, both can be fun and rewarding, but... Um, like, just for me personally, I think it's more exciting to bring something to life that doesn't already exist. Yeah, the designs for 14 are really gorgeous. I have been um, enjoying looking at some of my friends' cosplays, including... Melinda already has one from that, right? The Bard. I really like that costume. <laughs> Alright, good luck with your mock-up, Nina. <laughs> Playing Zelda when you should be working? Oh, uh, well, I'm very familiar with that. <laughs> that sounds like something I have done many times. I'm gonna enlarge these lines slightly too. I think when I started drawing these, I was a little bit more conservative with the size, and then I got to the main parts of the belt and realized how huge everything would need to be to fill in all the space that I was working with. Yeah, it sort of gives you some freedom when you create something from a digital world. I agree. Um, because with the digital world, like for this Zelda, there's so many different ways to interpret this. Like different materials that you choose to use, um, different ways, like textures that you would want to add to it. Like for instance, where I was talking about the fur earlier in the stream where I was like, oh, you know, I want it to have whatever type of certain texture. And like, that's just a personal choice. And different cosplayers will make different personal choices um, based on whatever they're comfortable with, what materials they can find, what materials they, they like view it as. And all of those like choices that you make um, are a lot of the fun for me. Uh, versus if I, if I do create Arwen's gown, I'm gonna have references of what the seamstresses and the designers for that movie, what they chose. And I'm going to try my best to recreate someone else's choices um, or to adapt them to, you know, what works for my budget and my time and all of that. And so it's kind of a different experience. Um, and in that case, like when I'm making Arwen's gown, any sort of deviation that I make from that original designer's choices can be seen probably by other people, <laughs> as an inaccuracy uh, versus on Zelda where it's like, you know, people are going to make this out of all different types of materials and then that's just, that's just their interpretation. So that's, that's why I tend to um, be more invested in this type of like bringing something from the digital world. That's why it's more interesting to me because then it's like, oh, this is Heidi's version of what this outfit looks like and not oh, this is some famous movie designer's version of what this outfit looks like and me doing my best to make it look the exact same as that. Oh, Spotted Shadow Warrior is working on Breath of the Wild Zelda cosplay. Are you doing like the default version or like the, the blue traveling outfit? I really like that one. But yeah. That's what kind of guides my choices. Travel some, welcome, hello. 10 out of 10 would wear. Okay, Spotted Shadow Warrior says uh, they're doing sort of doing their own thing with the cosplay, making it so that it's what I think she'd look like if she was in modern times. That sounds cool. I'd love to see what you come up with for that. That's really lit, <laughs> says Red Bard. Well, I'm glad that you think that. Yeah, so like Game of Thrones cosplay <laughs> was what got me on this topic. Um, as much as I would love to try to recreate any of the, the outfits from Game of Thrones, it's like the fabric that they used for those dresses exists in the real world and you can find it if you're dedicated enough. I've, some of them are like $500 a yard apparently, um, which is just crazy, but you know, if you have TV show budget. So it's the sort of thing where it's like, all right, 
if I'm cosplaying that, I now have to make the choice of, am I gonna spend $500 a yard on this? Probably not. Um, or am I gonna choose something that's less accurate and therefore like, I don't know. Maybe some people are, would be snobby about that. I guess most people probably aren't, but some people will be. <laughs> so. But that said, I mean, I feel like I, I have cosplayed from live action before when I did Rey from Star Wars, and that, that one I just did because I loved it. And, you know, Arwen, I'm just going to do that one because I love it. And it won't be accurate exactly, and it won't be a perfect recreation of what those um, designers did for the film, but, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, when you want to do something badly enough, you just do it. <laughs> Walk, uh, rock and egret. Yeah. Um, nah, I wasn't like overly fond of her character. She was fine. She served her purpose in the story. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't particularly care for her that much. So I don't know that I would feel that motivated to be here. Um, I do enjoy Sansa now. I didn't like Sansa earlier in the series, but now she's one of my favorites. And I feel kind of the opposite way about Daenerys, who used to be one of my favorites, and now I'm just like, eh, all right, fine. Daenerys is doing things. <laughs> um, but yeah. I still really like that series, and I have been heavily invested in it emotionally, so, you know. It's on the list of, of things I would consider cosplaying from. But yeah, Final Fantasy IX has been on my my list for a while. Lord of the Rings. Obviously Breath of the Wild, because of course. Uh, Agent Cuss, I think, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry, says, I feel like going into a cosplay knowing that it won't be a perfect copy of a real design will make the outcome a lot more pleasing. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and you know, that's just my own personal interpretation, but when, you're, when your costume isn't an exact copy of something else, then you're like, oh, you're more prone to see that as a flaw or a failure versus like, oh, well, this is just my version of Zelda that, you know, it's not wrong because the real one is just a digital drawing. It doesn't exist in the physical world. Maybe I should use some of these inner curves. I'm like struggling to find the perfect matches for these little guys. So close to being done with its belt. Which is exciting. I like how these lines here almost kind of become a part of this. Um, oh, sorry, I'm like off the page. <laughs> the lines kind of become part of this uh, belt tab at the end here. Oh, Melinda says that she'll fix up Zidane. That would be awesome. I would love that. I would super love that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know if that happens, but I'm sure you'll see it if that happens, because I only make costumes one at a time really slowly. <laughs> Boxers and messy bed head link from when he wakes up in Breath of the Wild. Nice. I'm looking forward to seeing people cosplaying that. Naked Link. Yeah. Well, not totally naked, but like as naked as we'll ever get, probably. <laughs> Boxers and bedhead link. 
Another link that I considered doing is the stealth suit link. I really like that design. Um, I feel like it's a little bit less... What, how do I phrase this? Uh, one of the reasons why I'm attracted to doing the Zora link is because I feel like it'll be easier to hide my female figure under that armor. Whereas I feel like the, the bodysuit of the, um, the stealth suit link is going to be a little bit more like harder to hide my female figure and it'll, I'll end up looking more like a girl in that one, which is fine, but you know, I'm still trying my best. <laughs> Wakey wakey, I'm nakey. <laughs> Why doesn't Link have nips but Mario did? I feel like that's a little unfair. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Cell shaded people don't have nips, it's the law. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Alright, I still have to fill in these little sections right here where um where I don't have references, but before I do that, I'm gonna take a bathroom break because I really have to go, but I'll be back in just a moment. Um, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna leave a note for anyone who joins us in the meantime. B R B. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm back. Mm, what did I miss? Teens still have nipples. <laughs> Who is so short? Uh, Link is like 18, but he's, he's small. He's 5'7". I'm also 5'7", so maybe I would be a good Link. Apparently Zelda's taller than Link in like a couple different... I don't know, maybe she's always taller than Link. <laughs> But apparently she's taller than him in Twilight Princess, and I'm pretty sure she's taller than him in Breath of the Wild as well. Which, hell yeah, tall ladies. You don't think nipples happen for people in the realm of Zelda, which would be Hyrule, until like 1920 when they hit puberty, and then their nipples just appear, they just... <laughs> Oh, Link is 5'7". You're not. I'm sorry, you're 5'7". Link is not 5'7". I want to know how tall Link is, though. Heidi, would I would tower over you. Yeah, I'm pretty tall. I mean, I'm not, like, super tall, but I'm, like, tall-ish for a lady, I guess. I'm, like, maybe slightly above average. Okay. So once again, I'm looking at this little section here, um, which is just an area that we just don't know what it looks like. It's kind of um, under this arm, oh, yeah. under this arm right here, uh, and like off to the side over here is what we're looking at. We don't know exactly where it goes. 
Everyone's taller than Link. <laughs> oh, nice. Melinda has shoe lifts to make you tall, but it will still be small. <laughs> You're a wonderful Link, though. It'll be perfect. A friend in college who was 6'1 and still wore heels to tower everyone. I mean, that's cool. Just embrace it. Wear, wear heels if you want to. Rose Lip Lash, uh, have a good afternoon slash evening wherever you are. And uh, thanks for tuning in. According to resources found on Google, Link is between 5'7 and 5'8. Nice. So I'm pretty, pretty similar to that. I mean... You can't control your height. You can just do what you want with heels. <laughs> you do what you can. So I have to decide what this space looks like. I could turn this into, like see over here, we've got this these lines that kind of create a, a wave that's connected. I could do the same thing over here because what I've got right now, it's like, I could continue the horizontal lines, but that might be too much. And if I just put a, a separate uh, vertical, it's like, I don't know, I guess there's two separate verticals that are pretty close by over here. I'm just trying to decide what is the most, most organic look for this. Um, and I think it would be cool to have this connected, honestly. Um, Plus this part of the reference isn't really obvious anyway, what, what it looks like, whether I'm making this accurate or not. So we just, uh, we just draw in the details that we want. So yeah, I'm gonna need to change these angles a little bit to make that work well. Probably this one too, but that's fine. There's more Jared cackling in the background. side will be kind of based on the same thing. Yeah, I think that looks pretty fine. Draw another line out here. This almost takes up too much space if I'm trying to continue it. Well, no, I guess that's just about perfect to for our other horizontal lines over here to just kind of um, join up with that. And I'm gonna try to not make the curve all identical, have some variation in there by making it thicker at the top. Okay. End is in sight. We're almost done with this belt design. I'm gonna say that these lines connect and then go down and intersect with the other one. And this is right about the border too of what we can see from the reference. So I think we've done a pretty good job of filling this in with stuff that looks, um, you know, in the same style. And here you can see where I was talking about that I feel like this is a continuous line that's like kind of in the background. I don't know, that's my take on it. Do I watch Ruby and would I do a cosplay from the series? No, I don't watch Ruby. I haven't yet. Oh, nice. Got a piece of armor from one of these chests. Uh, what armor did you get? Aw, oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm making the pattern for the belt. Um, and then this will be tooled out of leather uh, for like the finished belt. But this is just the design that I'm going to put onto the leather. 
And I feel pretty good about this section. So there's all of that down. I'm gonna erase this because that's not a real line. That was just kind of there as a guide. And I'm not really gonna put anything under the belt buckle, but I am gonna like just kind of finish off my lines and connect them so that it doesn't just drop off into nothing when I'm working on it. I do want the um, the lines to continue in case there's any kind of anything that shows at all. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. <laughs> connected. This is also a fake line. It's just there to kind of visually indicate the edge of that belt. Buckle. That's what I'm trying to say. Buckle. Well, that's kind of nice, actually. Maybe I will just fill in this area. <laughs> there we go. I'm just trying to connect things in a way that's like visually pleasing. That's probably fine. And this area will be covered, but at least my lines continue so there's not like a hard edge in case the something shifts or whatever. Uh, sorry, I missed some chat questions and things. Let me scroll up a bit. Uh, last time the stream was a pajama pa party. <laughs> I'm not wearing PJs today. I'm wearing jeans and a normal shirt. Banana Heifer, thank you for subscribing. And that is quite the name. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, it's the Climber's Bandana. Congratulations. That Climber set is really useful. I wore that one a lot when I was playing Breath of the Wild. How will I make the bag? I'm planning to sew it out of leather. Um, we'll just... We'll sew it. Uh, I don't have a pattern yet, but I might be able to do that on stream. We'll see. Does that mean a tap tap stream soon? Yes. Uh, I'm going to do this tooling once I'm totally done with the pattern and um, just uh, confident about how it's going to be. All right, Min Nugget heading out. Have a good evening or wherever you are at. Have a good rest of your day. Uh, and Spotted Shadow Warrior is back, so welcome back. Tap, tap, tap. Sisters of Battle Power Armor cosplay. I don't think I'm familiar with that one at all. I'm gonna look that up. Sisters of Battle Power Armor. Dude, that looks sweet. I've never even heard of this series, but there's a bunch of really sick cosplay from it. Huh, I don't know that I would do that just because I don't know that it's my style with a big armor, but like that's me, it's a really cool design. Yes, I will be doing another tap tap leather working stream, um, hopefully pretty soon. All right, we're back to our bag spot and we have to find a way to to fudge this design to make it look like um, it continues underneath this bag. So, what do you guys wanna put here? I feel like I should intersect this line up here. So there's something kind of connecting to it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go, man. I'm just gonna unleash my <laughs> creativity over here. I've been overthinking this whole thing probably. Now if I totally, oh yeah, I could do another one of those. Okay, we'll just keep it simple like that and that's probably fine. I like this angle more. Oh, 
That's a pretty good angle, I think. I guess I can erase my bag sign <laughs> so that it doesn't mean anything anymore. Joe Jokes Are Cool says, I wish 3D printers could make do multiple colors so it'd be possible to 3D print a Sheikah Slate. Uh, they can do multiple colors, but it's like single pieces in, multi in like whatever color. And you can 3D print a Sheikah Slate, you would just have to clean it up and then paint it afterwards. So yes, you are not limited by um, that 3D printer. It's just opening up new possibilities. Yeah, a 3D printer typically does not spit out finished pieces. I mean, depending on what you're making, I guess you could use a, a, a raw cat, a raw print for you know certain situations. But generally with cosplay, people print the shapes and they print the forms and then they um, sand it, smooth it, add coatings to it, doing whatever different things, and then we'll paint it. So, you know, that's something to consider. Warhammer 4000, or 40,000. Warhammer 40,000 is where she's from. That's good. Good to know. All right, travel some. Thanks for stopping by. Enjoy your dinner, and we will talk to you later. Uh, and Blixed Hand is also leaving because it's min five to midnight in Sweden. Well, thanks for tuning in uh, all the way from Sweden. I hope you enjoyed it. <sighs> all right. What did I decide I was gonna do for the last one? Oh yeah, something like this, where it's just like another curved piece, kind of like that guy. And we'll just kind of mirror that over here. I think that's some pretty good filler. It captures the spirit of what I uh, wanted to put in this section, so. And most likely this part will never be seen or at least it won't be seen very clearly or in much detail, but um, at the very least it gives us kind of an uninterrupted design for when, you know, if the bag isn't on at the time, it doesn't look like there's just a glaring empty spot on the belt that I made. And we'll adjust that edge a little bit. All right, cool. Uh, I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna say that we completed this belt design and I'm going to cross it off my to-do list, uh, which is awesome. So yay, here's our finished belt. I guess the last thing I could do is continue this line down into the, the buckle section, but <laughs> almost done. I'm going to continue it like this, make it into an S curve. How do I plan on making the buckle? Um, I'm thinking right now that I'm just gonna laser cut it out of like some layers of plastic. Do like one layer for the raised design and then one layer for that to sit on. Um, should be pretty nice and easy. And I'm already gonna be laser cutting some of these other designs. So, uh, yeah, that was, the, that was the plan for the buckle. But that pattern will all be just done digitally. So here is the belt in all of its glory. And that's about it for Mr. Belt. All right, so I'm gonna throw that aside. There's one thing that we got done today. Camella, Camellia Cosplay is going to bed too because it's almost midnight. Well, thank you for stopping by and have a good evening. <laughs> Tap tappy stream. All right, all of our European friends are signing off for the night, except for the ones that are crazy dedicated to watching something super late tonight. All right, here is my coat that we worked on last time. Um, so 
Here is the kind of temporary little Triforce. <laughs> this is not anything right now, it's just a little circle, but um, it represents that little Triforce button uh, in our, in our mock-up anyway. And so I'm just going to snatch this, uh, this portion off, and we'll start working on it over here. So as you can see in the reference images, um, we have the same pattern mirrored. I only need to do this once. I'm going to get them cut out uh, and they'll be identical. So I'm just drawing the one that I'm working on and I'm basically just going to be cleaning up my lines in the same way that I was doing throughout this. Please don't stay up later than it's healthy, my friend. That's good advice in general. So. Um, I don't know if this is not 100% symmetrical. I just freehanded this during our last stream and I just kind of roughly sketched it out. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger than this one. There's not perfect lines everywhere. That's fine and it's not going to be perfect right now either because that would be a waste of my time. Uh, what I am going to do is make clean lines and then when I um, just upload it I'll I'll basically pick whichever side looks better to me and then I'll mirror image. I'll create a mirror image that's perfectly symmetrical and that will be done digitally. It'll be way easier um, and faster than trying to do this. It'd be cool to do an extra, I guess, a DLC for Breath of the Wild. We could play some of the champions. That would be interesting, but it wouldn't really fit in with the, the flow of the game as they've established it. So I don't know if they would. I think they've already said. Sorry, I think Nintendo's already said that they're done with Breath of the Wild and they're gonna work on their next Zelda game. But, that's a shame. Now I have hiccups. <laughs> Bohemian Rebel, thank you for stopping by. And thank you for the compliment about my work. Yeah, it would be cool to play as Zelda in Breath of the Wild. But, you know, Link is my man. Yeah, I think Link is like my ultimate uh, video game crush. <laughs> I need to keep referring to my reference and not get cocky just because I already drew this. So the way that this works, I have some extra lines going on here. There is a, a trim right here that's like um, just like another line that's uh, along the border, but it actually doesn't exist here. It like. Um, the line kind of originates from this curve in this pattern. So, with that in mind, where's my even tinier one? Did I? No, oh, I guess this is my tiniest one. Is it? I thought I had an even smaller one. I guess not. I'm just. <laughs> I haven't learned all my pieces yet. Okay. Um, So I'm going to try to find whatever is the closest approximation of this curve. Um, with the knowledge that I'm trying to curve it up into the straight line right over there. And something even tighter than this. There we go. So yeah, with these curves, you just kind of have to play around and find whatever the best uh, position is and kind of combine things and blend things, but it's really helpful when you get the right things. And I can still kind of draw and erase on this. I'm trying not to make too many stray marks because it will be a lot harder to get the pencil off of this canvas, but I'm trying to at least, um, you know, be methodical about it. All right. Check in my notifications. Pink haired link is the best link. Yeah, the weapon durability was kind of a shame where you'd end up losing some of your favorite weapons, but I mean, if they didn't have that durability um, limitation, then you would just, then you would never experiment with different weapons. Like you would pick your favorite weapon or you would just always use your master sword no matter what. And it would kind of take away that incentive to um, constantly be replenishing your weapon source. So for that reason, I feel like they, you know, that's why that works to me anyway. But 
it's a trade-off between the frustration of like, ugh, I gotta replace my weapon again, versus, I really don't have a smaller one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like not convinced that I haven't just lost my tools. Um, versus the, the functionality of their, um, like weapons collecting. No, do I want this line to have any sort of body of its own is another question I need to ask myself. I mean, I guess I do. Maybe that one. Oh yeah, that's like perfect. It's so satisfying to find the right little spot where everything just perfectly lines up. Now I can still continue to tweak this shape um, in Illustrator. It'll be really easy to just um, move my lines around and kind of do even more finesse, but this is where we're at right now. <laughs> oh yeah, certain weapons are just toothpicks. They just don't last at all. <laughs> Breath of the Wild Link is definitely a babe. Oh yeah, I think he's a babe. I think he's the hottest Link. I don't know, Twilight Prince is pretty hot too. Uh, Bohemian Rebel says they've been wanting to make a costume for a festival in August for the first time. There's a cool fabric market close. Yeah, that sounds fun. You should definitely go for it. I'm always, I'm always encouraging people to do cosplay, um, you know. Find the thing that makes you really excited. Go cosplay from that. No. I think I need to refine this line a little bit and make it more of a leaf shape. being so indecisive with this. I'm just, you know, trying to be picky. <laughs> this one is like, this. What have we got? Universal, thanks for subscribing. Welcome. Rex from Xenoblade 2, that's a cool design. <laughs> what weapon did you guys fight Ganon with? Did, uh, whoever is like actually beat the game here. Jared went and leveled up his um, like tunic of the wild all the way just so he could be like that classic Link look when he went and fought Ganon. But I did not do that. Now it occurred to me that these are actually outlines, so I need to have like shapes within shapes. And the same with this one where it's like open on the interior. So I was originally planning to do these applique out of leather, but I think that's just impossible because of how tidy the lines are. Like if I um, tried to stitch along this line, it would just destroy the shape. <laughs> like it would just, it would make it unreadable. It wouldn't be cute. So with that in mind, um, 
I'm going to end up using that gold transfer vinyl, I think. That will serve my purpose as well. Alright, I'm not going to use this tool as a crutch either. Like, when it gets to the point where it's just like, okay, I need to draw my own line. Yes, I will clean that up in Illustrator and it'll be perfect looking, but it helps me to lay it down right now, and that way I know exactly what I'm aiming for. Everyone's talking about what this sexy armor was. Oh, is this what you wore to fight Ganon? Master Sword with Barbarian Armor is the most damage. That was before the Royal Guard Armor came out. Ooh, is that one even more damage? Because if it is, I need to go collect it. That's one of the ones I haven't gotten yet from the new DLC. You'd go gay for Twilight Princess Ganondorf? <laughs> really? Of all, all designs, you're like, mmm, Ganondorf. <laughs> I mean, whatever floats your boat, man. Oh man, multiple of you are like lusting for Ganondorf. You know what? I'm not gonna kink shame you. You you do what you want. You get what you want out of life. <laughs> That's Ganondorf and you know, to each their own. I guess I'm just a basic bitch, but you know, Link and Zelda are both pretty hot. <laughs> Uh, make sure I'm hitting this. Oh, this is our perfect remix for this conversation. Yeah, you can really see how I didn't line that up <laughs> for to mirror it very well. So trying to ineffectively remove my pencil line. Because so I have to leave some, some thickness there so that it's a physical shape and not just a line. And this is almost a straight line, but not quite, and it kind of curves up into our point. So I'm still kind of making a mess, but I'm doing my best. In love with Lady Urbosa, no, you're right, you're right. <laughs> oh, Melinda was like, Tim was like, now kiss when Kyla was wearing Ganon. <laughs> So Melinda, um, I got to cosplay with Melinda and her husband Kyle at uh, Dragon Con. Kyle was dressed as Ganondorf, Melinda was dressed as Link, and I was Zelda. And seeing Melinda and Kyle interacting, you know, knowing that they're married in real life and that they're wearing Link and Ganon in costume, it was just really cute. And Melinda, I don't know if I told you this, but like the moment when you're putting the wig on him, because um, the art of art of folks did all of this as a big makeup demo that was live at their booth, and so I walked up like kind of right as they were finishing it, and watched as Melinda was like putting the wig on him, and as they they blended all the hair pieces and stuff in. And it was just super cute because Melinda was fully dressed as Link and she's like standing over Ganondorf and like fixing his hair and it was just really precious looking because <laughs> it just like at that point looked like the characters and I was like what world would this be happening in? Uh, Dolphins is heading out. Thanks for stopping by. I'm glad that you were able to join us today. Yeah, Melinda is an amazing cosplayer. Thanks, Red Bard. Yeah, she's great. We all know who Jared's girl is in Zelda. Who's Jared's girl? I forgot. <laughs> I don't know who, who his Zelda pick is. Who's his favorite Zelda girl? I guess probably Zelda. 
Yeah, that makes sense because, you know. <laughs> So now I'm just adding some uh, dimension to these lines. Like I said, they're gonna be cleaned up in Illustrator. So while I am attempting to create something that's roughly symmetrical, uh, it's not worth my time to spend too much time here. So um, yeah, this is just my approximation Uh, RJ Chan, yes, I am Jared's wife. I'm married to Jared. <laughs> oh, the girl who runs the fishing spot in Twilight Princess. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, I forgot Jared loves her too. Mew Mizu, thanks for coming back. Uh, and good luck with your drawing. I've seen some really cool Land of the Lustrous cosplay already. I haven't seen this show yet, but I've only seen people doing it. Oh, thank you, Fairy Dust, for the comment about my hair. Uh, yeah, when I first got this haircut, I was really upset because I was wearing it. I had her straighten it after she cut it, and it was just not, it wasn't good. <laughs> also, part of the problem was that she cut it way shorter than I wanted. Um, so I was, I got my hair cut right before I did my Sheila photo shoot with my Dungeons and Dragons cosplay that I just did. Um, and I was getting my hair cut to look like Sheila's, or that was my, my hope, my intention. And they cut it way shorter than Sheila's. But if you recall, last summer I made hair extensions out of my own hair that, was, that I had recently had cut off. And um, so I wore those hair extensions and made, like, wore my own hair in my hair to make it longer and make it look like a full bob because it is really short on the sides. It's like here. So I had extensions in it to make it look even, and that's how I was able to pull that Sheila off still. But yeah. Zelda has so many best girls, you can make a whole dating sim out of them. I'm Yeah, I'm surprised there hasn't been a, Del a Zelda dating sim yet, because it's what the world needs, honestly. It's what we deserve. All right. I am not going to trace over the other half of this, because it would be a waste of my time. I only need half of this... Um, to uh, mirror it, and so that's what I'm going to be doing. Thank you, Kitten, for taking care of that extra link that we didn't need. It's a spam bot. Lame. And you don't know any good tutorials online for making hair extensions out of real hair. Um, the one I watched was from Dr. Locks on YouTube, and they have a bunch of really good YouTube videos. So if, um, that's one source for good um, wig tutorials. Also, Arda has a bunch of good wig tutorials, and they're now creating new ones, too. Um, so what was the question? Oh, so making out of real hair, I mean, it's more or less the same as using synthetic hair, only you have to be careful because um, real hair has to all be oriented in the same direction because of the way that the the hair cuticles or follicles or whatever are lined up. It needs to all go one way rather than synthetic hair, which can um, be like folded over on itself. So you would like, you would want to like, make the weft at the top of the hair of if you're using real human hair versus when you're doing synthetic hair you can just like um sew it down the middle um and then fold it over on itself and then you have a, like a double width i don't know if that made sense <laughs> um if i ever do another stream where i make stuff like that i'll explain it better an official zelda dating sim yeah, I feel like that's really overlooked uh, on Nintendo's part. Like, that would be wildly popular. 
All right, looking at the back design again, um, this one's really faint in the reference image. It's really hard to tell exactly which lines are connected and which ones are not. Um, but at least definitely these, um, the leaves at the bottom are coming out of the, uh, this line, the horizontal line. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that one and connect it. How's it going over here? Oh, hello, Syncrophy. Welcome. Can you date the mailman? The Zelda mailman? I want to date Beetle. Yeah, that's the mail option. It's all of... <laughs> is that you have all of the lovely ladies from the Zelda universe, and then you can also date Beetle. That's the game I want. <laughs> What is it? He makes like some weird comments to you in Breath of the Wild when because he sees you at every single um, stable and he's like, "Are you stalking me?" Or we must be lovers. We must be lovers in a past life or something like that. He makes some comments where it's just like, oh, "Okay, Beetle." <laughs> anyway, that's who I ship Link with is Beetle. Mm. He's also the bonus ending. Yeah, that'd be good. Somebody quick, develop this fan game. Checking my reference again, just to make sure I'm not totally botching this. Cool. That works for me. Beetle best boy. Beetle? <laughs> yeah, he's cute. He's a good lad. The ship is lethal. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. It's a good good ship name. Honestly, this one I'm just gonna drop my hand. I mean, when you don't need the curved rulers, then there's no need to uh, overcomplicate it. But I feel pretty confident sketching this in. And it's small, it's pretty even. So there we go. And finally, the top one. I do think that these are separated just barely. Um, like, rather than this being one connected piece, it's like um, a separate little shape up here. It's really hard to tell, but you know. That's where the whole interpretation comes in, where it's like, this is my version of what this coat is gonna look like. Um, and other cosplayers will have other slightly different versions that are all unique in their own ways, and that's great. Once again, I'm just going to loosely sketch the inside here. Um, well, it's actually a pretty tight sketch. I'm not making as many extra lines this time. Um, but then I'm going to leave it at that. 
here's my imagine line, imaginary line where it's being mirrored. So I can line that up pretty easily, and there we go. I'm not gonna do both halves of that because that would be a waste of my time. I love how much he loves and cares for his sweet beetle children, says Jet Set Slider. <laughs> I agree. I think that he's taking good care of those beetles. Hey, Leonova, glad you made it. Beetle also provides financial security because you're constantly selling him things. So this line and in the interior of this little crest here also needs to become a part of the straight line. So now we're doing that. Hey, RJ Chan donated $20. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in. It's a little harder to work in this area because the way that my fabric is all worked up, but that's fine. as well. Needs to be a little bit more round. Okay, so because of the way this is set on a curve, and because this line here is not perfectly symmetrical, or it's like uh, not perfectly vertical, I am going to draw, I think, both halves of this one just um, so that I have that reference for where those angles, for, for this curve to make sure that my shape will sit perfectly here. Uh, Stella Streen says, will this be available on YouTube? Yes, I need to catch up with posting past streams on YouTube, but yes, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna be diligent about that. I'm gonna make another note, upload streams. And yes, have, enjoy your night, get some good sleep, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll put this up on YouTube if you wanna finish it later. ASMR where I'm just like whispering into the microphone. Here's our gentle stream, our calming stream for today. All right, I am going to give myself a, a straight vertical here. Um, or at least as close as I can. So right now I'm looking at the way that this horizontal line goes. Oh good, I can see it in my camera. And I'm trying to kind of um, approximate what a straight perpendicular line would look like based off of that. And I'm just gonna do a dotted line. Oh, it needs to be slightly over, oops. Okay, so that is our, our true vertical compared to the seam line that I originally kind of drew my shape onto. So that's fine. Hmm. Hey Jed, thank you, I am doing well. I'm doing very well actually. So now if this is our true vertical, our like flowery shape or whatever will stem from here rather than from where I actually drew it. So there we go. And also, is this connected is another good question. And I don't think that it is. 
So just like our last one, it's going to start kind of up here and be separate. So there's, I'm going to leave a small space here. And yeah, these designs are just so tiny and thin, they need to be they need to be vinyl and not stitched down because the stitching would just make it look really muddy and any kind of small mistake would be really obvious. So we don't want that. We want it to look really clean and cute. So I'll need to do some tests. Hopefully my fabric will work well with the transfer vinyl, but I think it will work out. And there's the outside of my shape here. Oh, Vifantes, thank you so much. Tell your wife I said thanks. That's kind of her. All right, I said I was going to draw both halves of this, but then I lied. <laughs> what I am going to draw is I'm going to kind of... Uh, draw my... Um, my baseline here. It's not a true horizontal line, but it's a baseline of where this is going to line up. So I can make sure it's symmetrical to that and I think that'll be fine. I think that's enough information there to get what we need. So now I've done the side, I've done the back, and I've done the front. Ooh, there we go. All right, and I've got all of that stuff ready to be scanned in and turned into a real final pattern for cutting out on my, uh, I like to, I like to gesture to it as so you guys can see it. I'm going to cut that out on my Silhouette Cameo, which is going to automate all of that cutting and make it really smooth and nice and easy. So now I'm taking my coat off of its dress form. Move that out of the way a little bit. Now I'm just going to plop this bad boy <laughs> right onto my tiny desk. I'm going to zip it up. That'll make it easier to deal with. So this is my coat that I made. It, you can hardly see any of because it's all shoved in here. Now, um, my front opening here, I have these lines blocked out for placement and spacing and approximate size of what I expect these straps to be. And that is this part here that I'm looking at. However, I'm not gonna like finalize these lines yet because I am still waiting for my buckles to come in. If you look really carefully, there's a little a little drawing here and um, if you look carefully at the design, you can kind of tell that these are little, uh, little press buckles. Like kind of like, I'm used to seeing these on purses or like small luggage um, where you like kind of press down the tab and it slides out. And so that's what these are. And I have them ordered and they're in the mail and they're on the way. They should be here, I think next week they're gonna arrive. So I want to get those in my hand and lay them down and make sure that they are absolutely the right size and shape before I finalize these lines and create a pattern for what this gold underlay is gonna be. Um, I just really wanna make sure those pieces all fit. So um, instead of doing that, I'm gonna work on this bottom part here. Uh, about to clean that up and make it look nice like our other drawings and I like flip this over what I need to do is like, work on this back so be able to do the bottom part of the front and the back at like the small of the back and I think that's about all I can do on this I guess I could do the hand but I don't have any of that drawing yet <laughs> so let's recombobulate All right, that works. Yeah, I'm just like crushing it into the corner there. That's fine. Ihato, thank you so much. Oh, thank you guys saying my videos are satisfying to watch. I'm, I'm glad that you feel that way. I sometimes think that they're garbage, but you know what? We're all our own critics, our own worst critics. Trying to make this a little bit flatter and make sure there's not like layers of fabric built up under there. Which there's still, I'm like right on a seam. 
Womp womp. Okay, what can I put under there to draw on? Here we go. This is just a little notebook here. It's a little spiral, and so I'm sliding that under there, and all of this is, all that is doing is making a little uh, flatter surface for me to draw on here. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yes, those are thumb locks. Or there's a couple different um, names for them I've discovered, but yeah, thumb lock, uh, press lock are both um, keywords that I had good results with, uh, finding search results. <laughs> you guys are trying to turn my streams into merch so I can do more streams. Well, I appreciate that, but I don't know how necessary that is. I will keep streaming for as long as I can. Maybe not today. I'll probably finish this up. I'll, I'll probably try to do at least the other two drawings that I was showing you guys just a minute ago. Okay, so this thing is very symmetrical in the drawing, and mine that I sketched out was is pretty rough and not very symmetrical. I don't have... All right, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna grab some Q-tips. This is necessary. <laughs> Sorry, I almost knocked over my trash can getting back in here, but I'm back. All right, Red Bard is heading out. Thanks for stopping by. It was nice to see you. All right, now I'm going to take my glass of water that I'm not really drinking from, and I'm going to use this Q-tip to erase some lines here. So this is my water erasable pen that I drew all of this with under the fabric, and you can see how easy it is to erase lines. I'm just using my Q-tip as like a poor man's paintbrush. Um, so that I can be a little bit more precise with which lines I'm removing and not just swipe over the whole thing and take off too much information. Which some of this I do want to lighten up. This is very rounded, that's what I decided. That I drew my lines a little bit too sharp when they're very rounded in the reference. I'm just gonna paint some water on, more or less. It takes that line right off. And I should still be able to draw over the with pencil. Nice to see you, Celestine. Yeah, I'm always happy to hear that anybody in our chat room is working on their own art projects. Whether it's cosplay or crochet or whatever it is that you're into. It's neat that we're all just doing art together of some kind. Don't erase too much, but I've kind of cleaned up my messiest uh, overdrawings. And this is why I like to use the erasable pen, um, because my drawing style is pretty messy, where I just kind of lay down lines indiscriminately, um, and often like make lines way too thick as I'm just kind of roughing out shapes. Um, so I like to use the erasable pen so that it just doesn't become just a huge mess with lines on top of lines on top of lines. Um, although you can also, if you don't have an erasable pen, you can draw in like a really light color and go over with a darker color to like really um, lock in the lines that you want. So that's just a matter of preference and this keeps things a little bit cleaner for me. Spotted Shadow Warrior is sewing in wig pins. That sounds fun. Yeah, uh, whenever I'm done with my stream, I'll probably go back to working on the wig and like just I have so many wefts to sew into my base wig So I'm just probably gonna be sitting and binge watching something and just like turning my brain off while I just sew a bunch of wefts in 
because that's always the most boring part for me, but it's worth it when you need the extra volume. And Zelda has a shitload of hair. All right, now there's a much better line that more closely matches what I need. Once I've got my pencil marks down too, I can completely erase the old lines if I want to. I don't know that I'll go that far or care that much. Um, but it really helps for kind of um, keeping everything clean. So that, to me, it's not so much about being neat for the sake of neatness, but it's so that you can get um, a more accurate visual guide of what your final product will look like. That's why I care about my mock-ups. That's why I'm spending all this time cleaning up my drawings and stuff, is because I want to be able to look at the mock-up and in my brain fill in the gaps to what it needs to look like in the finished version and whether or not I need to make changes to get there. So that's why I'm pretty meticulous. That's why I care about like, oh, not making too many crazy stray marks all over the place and just kind of keeping the ones that I really need is because that's how you get the more accurate like visualization of what that needs to mean so or what that needs to look like and, and what changes you need to to make to get to where you want to be what am i looking at link plays sz thanks for showing up Oh, that's awesome. Um, v Fontes, you should tell Monica to um, get into making her own clothes for whatever she wants to do, whether it's designing something just for herself to wear out or making a costume for cosplay or whatever. Like, yeah, especially if you have the skill, like you should put it towards something that you enjoy. All right, now I'm nice and hydrated. Okay, um, so as I determined earlier, these lines of this triangle are not actually true straight lines. They're like curved um, because I guess I took my reference away from you guys. It's just, a, it's like a very soft and kind of, um, I don't know what you would call it, like bubbly, like bubble letters. Like they're not true um, straight lines. They kind of have a, the effect of, of looking like a straight line, but it's a little bit more puffy. I might flip this around. Yeah, I think that's about right. So that way I can get that like curved top with like a soft angle at the top instead of a like a crisp point. That looks good. Hopefully that was approximately the right position. I didn't line it up super carefully. Cool, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm still a little bit pointy, but I'm gonna soften it up there with my pencil. And grabbing a fresh Q-tip, where I brought several, come on, where did I? I just throw it down on the ground. And my water glass over here. And now I'm gonna erase all those extra lines, just because they're like, again, they're visually in my way. They're blocking me from seeing like all of the true shapes that I'm trying to add right now with the pencil, so. Cleaning them up um, just gives us a better view of the lines that are like the final lines, the ones that I'm trying to put down here. There we go, it already looks so much better. Uh, Link fan is asking, hey, how do I motivate myself to work on my cosplays? Um, well, I have a deadline and I know that KatsuCon is an exciting event for me that I'm always looking forward to going there and being there. So it's like, if I want to be my best and have the most fun, 
Um, for me, a big part of that is making sure that I am wearing a costume that I love, that I'm happy with, that I, um, you know, enjoy running around in, and that I'm proud of. And so all of those things, I know that to get from point A, which is today, to point B, which is me having the most fun possible at Patsicon, um, that things need to happen in between there to um, make my costume exist. <laughs> so that is a good motivator, is just having that deadline and having a, a clear goal of like, oh, I need to be ready by this time and, and place. Um, so that's a good motivator. Also just having you guys here with me in the stream and people that I am can hang out with while I'm working on stuff. Um, is very, very motivating because I can't just get up or get distracted or go walk around or sit here on my phone <laughs> because I've got a bunch of people watching me and it's like if I'm not working on stuff then I'm just wasting all of your time as well. Um, so those are good motivating factors if you're having trouble. Even if you don't want to do streaming, like a number of my friends will like get together and do like Google Hangouts or Skype sessions where they're just chilling and working on stuff together. And it's like a lot of the time these are people who live on, you know, opposite parts of the country, opposite sides of the country, and they can't physically get together to have a sewing day or whatever. So it becomes a virtual sewing day where people are doing their work at their computers. So even if you're not into streaming, you could do something like that just privately with your friends. To help motivate you on whatever your project is, whether it's cosplay or not. Yeah, it's slowly starting to look more like what I'm trying to make it look like. And then once again, there's no sharp corners here. There's round, round edges as we get into this. Um, the one at the bottom should be perfectly straight just because it's the edge of that border. All right. Now, I did not necessarily create a perfectly geometric triangle because as you can see I'm lining this up with the bottom and it's not a 100% perfect peak. Oh damn it Twitch crashed as I was... Oh it's a Twitch problem. I wonder if my... Yay better ha- okay can you guys see me? Are we all good? All right. I think I think I'm getting I'm getting go-aheads in the chat. All right, um, the answer to your question, Link Finn, was uh, I use you guys here as motivation, um, but if you don't, if you're trying to motivate yourself by working with other people and you don't want to stream, um, you can do like Skype sessions or Google, Google Hangout sessions with a friend where you're both kind of working on whatever your goal is. Um, instead of necessarily having like a whole Twitch audience. I should have done this first, dang it. Now I'm like, ugh, I should correct this. <laughs> ugh, I should correct this, but I hate it. All right, this one is probably gonna be done in Illustrator too. <laughs> Just slide that over and make it look better. Cause yeah, this is like slightly wet because of my Q-tips and uh, it's just getting weird looking now. I'm gonna draw my faint vertical. You know what? I'm gonna say to hell with this vertical line. I can still um, manipulate things in Illustrator if I want this to be more symmetrical, but for now and for the sake of finishing my stream and finishing my project, I'm going to um, commit to the lines that I have down here on my page. I'm gonna slide them around a little bit. I'm gonna make some adjustments. But I, won't, I don't wanna get so bogged down with like accuracy or something that I am um, making things way harder on myself. 
because this is the shape that fits best into the garment that I put together. So, Dolphins is back. Yeah, it's like a study group for friends who live on the other side of the country. That's a good way of thinking about it, like a study group. Um, where you all just sit together and make your costumes and cry about your deadlines. <laughs> but yeah, having a deadline is a motivator because it's like, I have to do this amount of work in this amount of time, and in order to get to the finish line, I need to start now and do this much per day or per week or whatever. And you'll just get better at scheduling yourself as you get better at your craft, whatever your craft is. Um, you'll start to figure out how long it takes you to do things and get better estimates of um, how to plan. Now I am just sketching again because my stuff wasn't drawn symmetrically the first time, so it's like, I'm gonna try to compensate for that where I can. It's looking, looking right. This is also just quite a bit more symmetrical. I'm still gonna have to line up my lines, especially the outside, the exterior line, but. I'm just doing a better job with the sketching this time as well. because I have a finer drawing utensil. That pen that I was using was a wider tip and it was also just very faint and kind of uh, mushy looking lines that were coming out of it. So not, not ideal. <laughs> this pencil is allowing me to get a lot more control with the shapes. what I want. I guess in this reference you can see a little bit more of a point. This is the hand applique. It's more or less the same pattern as this one up here. Not quite the same. So I guess I'll make this a little bit more of a point to match it as well. Oh, what have we got over here? Scarlet Letter says they hate deadlines because it overwhelms me too much. Um, yeah, it, there's a like a, a fine balance between a, a good motivating deadline versus a stressful deadline. So you want to pick deadlines that are like achievable. And again, it's hard to get a good sense of that, especially if, at first. But, um, you know, pick small goals and short term deadlines. And yeah, that'll, that'll uh, help you kind of um, work your way up to it. Who needs deadlines when you have Katsu Crunch? Yeah, Katsu Crunch is a big deadline. Drag saw, welcome. Seattle's great, uh, Bahamut KOTD. Uh, Jared has not been playing Monster Hunter yet because he's trying to finish one more video before he plays that game, but he's really excited about it. He's got the code, he's like raring to go. Uh, Wilder Rocks, welcome. I'm probably not going to be streaming for a lot longer. I'm going to try to clean up one more drawing in the back and then I'm probably going to call it a day because I'm pretty hungry. It's about 4 o'clock where I am, almost 4. So I've been going for like 3 hours, which I think is pretty good for my one stream. Alright. I'm laying this side out. Once again, I'm going to use this notebook just to like make a surface flat so that I'm not drawing on top of the rest of my sewing work. Okay. That's better. That's a little bit more centered up. I'm 
Nice, congratulations, Spotted Shadow Warrior, for finishing up your wig pins. Okay, so one thing that I'm going to try to do here is make these lines more straight as I can. I put my pencil. There it is. It's like falling off the edge of my desk. Pat Zerli donated $15 saying, Hi Heidi, how are you? Nice to see you not giving up after the disaster in the old house. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm doing very well. Um, it was rough for quite some time. And now I feel a lot better and I'm back at it and I'm ready to stream again. So thank you guys for being patient with me while that happened. It took some time for me to feel uh, ready again. But I really appreciate your patience and that nobody seemed to be angry that I took so long to um, return after saying that I was going to much earlier. But you know what? That's how it happens sometimes. Okay. This is according to my ruler a perfect square which I wish I could just twist the whole thing a little bit now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> and I'm like committed to it. All right, I'm just gonna um, go ahead and finish up the lines I have here and then any changes I wanna make to the angles of things. Like I'm, I wish I had drawn this slightly more like that. Like if I could just turn it on the page, I would. But that's what Illustrator is for and it's gonna make that super easy. For us to do. Um, and so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to do that as a later step. Let me look at this reference one more time. Uh, yeah, my lines need to be thicker. It needs to be more than a half inch. <sighs> yeah, I was so confident with this pencil and now I'm just making a mess on my fabric. Well, thank you guys. Everyone's Everyone has always been very kind and supportive in this chat and that is very appreciated. So I'm actually gonna make these pretty big. This is like three quarters of an inch now. And there's a button that goes in the middle. So that button can just like overlap this spot, but this is where the center point of the button needs to be. Um, like the edges of the button are gonna be bigger than this. So the, the visual space the button takes up is gonna be like, I don't know, maybe there or whatever, but as far as our purposes right now, this is all we need to do to indicate where the center point is. That's where the button will be sewn down. All right, and last couple of lines are done with these guys. To make, oh, I guess this is the line that I'm trying to continue now. Yeah. So I'll be able to um, flip the design and mirror it um, horizontally, but I will also mirror it vertically. Like not a, what am I trying to say? Um, just to like kind of check the trueness of my lines. Like, um, 
I'll be able to fold it up on itself and make sure the top and the bottom match and that it's like uh, that the points are like evenly spaced both on a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. So I'm going to do all of that digitally, but this gives me the information that I need to follow on which lines to trace and exactly where to place them um, to get my best results. So uh, while directs, yes, I'm drawing directly on the material. Um, this is just my mock-up. This is not a, the real finished coat. This is just an indication of what my finished coat is going to look like. So I'm drawing all my designs on it first, and then um, I will trace them, copy them digitally, make a digital pattern, and then use those digital files to cut them by machine. And that's it, guys. That's it for today. <laughs> I'm really hungry and I need to take a break, but I got a lot done. We, we accomplished a lot in our stream. I got this one done, I got the back one done, I got all of the ones on the little cape part done, and the belt is done. So that is a great amount of work for how long I've been sitting here, which is not, not really that long. Um, I'll pop my reference image back up here while I say my goodbyes to everybody. Yes, dolphins, it was my house that flooded. It sucked a lot, but I'm doing better now. That's totally fine. There's a no no obligation for anybody to donate. I'm glad you guys are just here and enjoying it. Uh, thank you, Largo, for lurking and enjoying the stream. That's all I all I hope for is that people are just what well, they like what they watch, whether or not you can interact or donate or anything like that. But we're just here to hang. Thank you. The digital patterns that I just made are gonna be cut. Um, some of them will be cut out on my vinyl cutter, which is able to make like a really thin sticky vinyl or a transfer vinyl that I can put on the fabric. And then some of them are going to be cut out of um, leather on a, on a laser cutter. So depending on what I can do for each, um, that's how they're going to be machine cut. Anyway, thank you guys so much for coming to hang out and uh, I'll see you guys next Wednesday for my next stream. And that's about it. Yeah, cool. Um, my next stream, I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet. If I can get the belt ready, we can tool the belt. Um, if not, I'll probably post about it, and you guys can check Instagram or Twitter for my progress in the meantime. But thank you all for coming to say hey, and I will see you on Wednesday. Goodbye. <laughs>